There is a pastor that I met many years ago, and his mantra was, my church deserves a happy pastor, and I am happiest when I eat. Well, that pastor has had both knees replaced twice, and he can barely get out of the chair today. And today he weighs over 300 pounds. The prayer list in the church is more about health issues than it is about lost people. What's the problem? The problem is food. Food, both processed foods and too much food, is a leading underlying cause of many diseases, specifically inflammation and cancer. What if we met to meet each other's needs instead of meeting to eat? There's a great old story of D.L. Moody, this great evangelist from Chicago in the last century, and Moody loved Charles Spurgeon. He considered Spurgeon a mentor and a hero, even though he didn't know him personally, and he only knew him from afar. So Moody went overseas to meet Spurgeon. He walked up and knocked on the door. Spurgeon opened the door with a large cigar hanging out of his mouth, which shocked D.L. Moody. And then D.L. Moody kind of took a couple steps back and he was shocked and he was bewildered. His hero. Well, then Moody said to Spurgeon, how, how can a man of God do that to your body? Pointing to his cigar. Well, Spurgeon, who was always up for a challenge, he kind of smiled and took the smoky out of his mouth and walked down a few steps and pointed to D.L. Moody's rather large, rotund stomach and said, the same way that you, a man of God, can do that. Now, it's even been reported that Spurgeon says, Mr. Moody, I'll put down my cigars when you put down your fork. Ah, that hurts. (laughs) Gluttony is a sign that there's something eating us. Gluttony is a symptom of a deeper problem. Number one, it could be ignorance of how to eat and how to shop for good, healthy eating. Number two, emotional salvation that becomes the death of ourself. And number three, a chemical imbalance. Now the Corinthians, they had a model that life was for pleasure. And that is why we see such teachings in the book of Corinthians and also in Galatians about the dwelling of the Spirit. When we are seeking a deeper relationship with Christ, our sins are no longer optional. Gluttony and drunkenness are sins of the flesh. When we are seeking the pleasures of the flesh, we are no longer seeking the pleasure of God's presence. Drunkenness is a word that Christians never really brag about, or at least they didn't in my early Baptist days. Yet it has the same metabolic effect on the body as gluttony. Gluttony causes the brain to be intoxicated, and this leads to poor decisions, poor management of time, and dangerous behavior. Now, drunkenness and gluttony, they lead to a callousness in the Christian's life. People use excuses to avoid really recognizing their gluttony or their drunkenness, such as, well, I'm just too tired. Oh, I'll do that later. I'm not interested in being on a mission today. I need this food right now and don't tell me what to eat. (laughs) Now here's the excuse that really breaks my heart and people tell it to me quite often. Annette, I'm saved by grace. I can eat what I want and how much I want. Do you hear the pride shouting from that? This is not a sign of saved by grace. It's a sign of ignorance of what a life in Christ truly entails. In the early days of childhood, we called this fire insurance. Get saved, live like you want. It was like a checked box Christianity. Gluttony is an ignorance to the saving grace of our precious Lord and Savior. It is understanding why we have 25 Bible verses on our body about our body being a temple of the Holy Spirit. Living in gluttony is the opposite of living in saving grace. Grace is God's life, power, and righteousness given to us by unmerited favor. It's through grace that God works in an effective change in our heart and in our lives. Grace gives us a new life in which it's not condemned by God. To continue in gluttony is to devalue the life that God has given us. Grace is understanding all God has done for us and continues to do. And when that reaches the center of your heart, there is no room for gluttony or drunkenness. There is only room for Him. So here are three steps to help you get free from the sin of gluttony. Number one will always be number one. Ask the Lord for help. This is the first step. If you feel convicted of being gluttonous, ask the Lord for forgiveness and also for his help. 
Confess your need in this area. It's simple. Number two, pay attention to why you're eating. Start reflecting whenever you have to, the urge to kind of gorge yourself on food. What? Why am I turning to food right now? What else is going on? Practice turning to the Lord instead and seeking His comfort and His presence. Spend time praising and worshiping and drawing close to Him. This helps loosen gluttony's hold on your life. Number three, embrace balanced eating. Eating balance, being recognizing of the hunger cues, practice moderation, all of these skills, they have to be learned. So to give you a head start on this journey, I wrote the Hunger Satisfied Journal. This book will walk you through the process of changing your eating habits and teach you the tools that that you may need to eat balanced with God at the center of your focus always. Now you can get that through the seven steps to amazing biblical health and it's totally free. Now I want you to think about breakthroughs. Breakthroughs happen when you're ready to break up. Bad relationships are toxic and relationships can cause a dependency and it's time to break up with gluttony and drunkenness. Break up with comfort food that doesn't love you, hug you, laugh with you, or comfort you. It's just a chemical stimulant created for nourishment but used for desensitizing hurt. It's time to break up this comfort and seek the Lord for comfort instead. Break up with control. Eating beyond satisfied, eating being gluttonous is an act of control. Pray for God to reveal why you need this control so you can break up with it and receive a breakthrough. Break up with callousness. God's word is written for you. Callousness comes from not seeing God at work in your life and the failures of those around you. And this results to going to food as a replacement. Callousness towards the word and God's presence results just because we're ignoring him. Pray for God to reveal this to you so you can break up with callousness and experience the peace that God wants to bring to you. There is no freedom in Christ unless you break up with the comfort of this world, the control of your hands, the callousness of your hurts. You don't need to work on these areas. Let God do the work. You just need to break up and God will bring the healing. Breakthroughs come with peace, joy, gentleness, laughter, and an overarching love from our Lord and Savior. Gluttony, it can be done away with. As soon as you recognize God wants to be who you go to for that comfort. So break up with all those other reasons. Seek him instead. And thank you for letting me share this with you today. Mm -hmm. 